Oh. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Steereax. Today, we're talking mouth tape. You might have seen this all over social media. Your favorite influencers probably doing it and promising you that it's going to give you the best night of sleep you've ever had. But is all that just some lack? Is this a biohack gone mad? Or does it actually hold some utility? Well, we'll conduct our research on the internet and see what we can find. And as always, consult your medical provider and make sure that they are okay with you taping your mouth to sleep. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But there might be something to it. So let's dive in. Did you know this tape was originally designed by the Secret Service to keep agents from talking in their sleep and giving away secrets? But then they started to realize that not only did they get way better sleep, but their faces appeared wider and cheekbones more defined. Fast forward to today and regular citizens are going crazy for this and for good reason. And because our nose clears out dust and other nasties, if you are someone who breathes through your mouth at night, you're inhaling bacteria. Not to mention your mouth just gets dry and gross and spiders might crawl. On there. It has breathable holes if necessary, but what's important is you train your mouth to be closed while you sleep. Interesting. I actually am going to push back on the swollen spiders thing. I was terrified by that for a long time growing up, and actually that seems to be a myth. However, the other stuff that he said seems to be grounded in reality, and my own personal experience was I heard about mouth taping years and years ago, maybe like 2018, Circa that time, Paleo FX, there was a company there selling this stuff, giving out free samples and said, hey, you coming back tomorrow at the event? Wear this tonight, see how you sleep. Lo and behold, I put it on, I slept really good. And you're always wondering, is this a bit of a placebo effect? But it was something I did for years thereafter. In fact, I only recently stopped because I've got two small children and sometimes you're talking to them in the night, trying to get them back to sleep and stuff. And it was a pain in the butt to keep putting tape on and off my mouth. But it really does help keep the lips closed, obviously, which forces nasal breathing, which nasal breathing should be the default pattern of breathing that we are utilizing almost all of the time at rest. In fact, we should really only be getting into mouth breathing when we're at intense levels of exercise. Now, the term mouth breather has become a derogatory term that we throw around for people that are... And it leads to snoring and sleep apnea, and it's just kind of a colloquial thing we talk about in our culture for somebody that's maybe not operating at the highest levels of agency and health. But it does all manner of things. It's not allowing the diaphragm to work properly. It disrupts the oral microbiome. It can increase your risk for cavities. It's not filtering the air. Your nose has those little nostril hairs in it that filter the air and actually just help you breathe mechanically more appropriately. And... If you could do some breath work whilst you sleep, wouldn't that be a smart thing to do? Because you're going to get seven, eight hours of reprogramming yourself to breathe properly at rest. So mouth taping isn't just some woo idea that some rando came up with. It actually has some pretty legit reasons why you should potentially try it. Of course, if you don't have a health issue, that would be a counterintuitive reason to do so. What do the doctors think about mouth taping? That people that breathe through their mouth actually have facial droop and it makes their jaw more round and sometimes can have poor defined cheekbones. I've always wondered if it's true that breathing through your mouth affects your face. So it turns out that breathing through your mouth causes a wild series of butterfly effects. More mouth breathing means the muscles of the cheek have to work harder. When these cheek muscles work harder, they put more pressure on the upper and lower jaws. And over time, this can narrow the shape of the face and the dental arches. A narrower face and dental arches means there's less room in the mouth for the tongue, which drops to the floor from its natural resting position at the roof of your mouth. And because the tongue is now on the floor of the mouth, it then hinders the mid-face development. So some children who are chronic mouth breathers can end up with long, narrower faces with less prominent jaws. Yeah, that's super interesting. It reminded me of the work of Weston A. Price. He, he also looked at this stuff in a lot of indigenous cultures that he visited in the early 1900s. And one of the things that he noted was that they had beautiful wide faces, like really wide nasal passages. They had no malformities of the jaw. There was no such thing as really crooked teeth or underbites, overbites. They just had this like really well-functioning face that breathed well. And a lot of that has to do with the breathing mechanics not being a mouth breather, but also that they were breastfed and that developed the facial structure too. So these things do seem to be intricately connected. But once somebody defaults to a mouth breathing pattern, it's all downhill from there. You don't want to do that. I need to settle this. Should you be taping your mouth shut at night? For anyone that hasn't seen, this is TikTok's latest beauty trend. And influencers are promising that mouth taping can improve your sleep, sharpen your jawline, and even cure sleep apnea. But is it actually true? 
Well, the idea is simple. You tape your mouth shut to force yourself to breathe through your nose at night. And our noses are actually designed to filter, humidify, and warm the air we breathe, which is much better for our lungs. So logically, it does make sense. And studies have shown that mouth breathing can cause bad breath, dry mouth, and poor oral health, among other things like changing the shape of your face. I mean, we all know who's a mouth breather just by looking at them. But can mouth taping prevent any of this? Well, there is some evidence that shows it may reduce snoring and potentially improve sleep, but there's no research to prove it can actually sharpen your jawline or change the structure of your face. Of course, people online love to show their before and after photos, but let me remind you, with the right lighting and angles, this is how easy it is to make your face look different. So be careful what you believe online, because a lot of these influencers are just trying to make money and sell you their products. Good points there. You can do a lot with just postural changes, lighting, like I can do a before and after. I can show you me looking kind of flabby and week and then I can change the lighting, do 50 push-ups and a couple of squats and then say, look what I did in 10 days. And it wasn't 10 days at all. It was 30 seconds. And this is a marketing tactic to sell a product. So of course you're going to want to, if this is how you make your money and you're going to say like, look how it changed my face. And there might be an element of truth to this. Some people aren't selling products. They're saying this was really transformative for me. And again, it makes a lot of sense. And whilst there might not be that much good research or actually scientifically valid backed data on the process of mouth taping itself, there are many, many bits of anecdata. And they say the plural of anecdote is data. There are hundreds, thousands, potentially tens of thousands of people now that have adopted mouth taping as a regular practice and they swear by it. They say they sleep better. They say they don't snore anymore. They say they get into deeper REM sleep so they have more vivid dreams and they wake up feeling more restful. Men will report waking up with erections in the morning again, a sign of good rejuvenative and restorative sleep. So do with that what you will. It's another one of these things that you can try it and see if it works for you. Or you don't, and you can decide it's crazy, and you sleep just fine. And if your wife hasn't kicked you that lot and tell you to get a sleep divorce because you're always snoring, maybe you're okay. Maybe you don't need to do this. Maybe you breathe perfectly. But for many of us, I think when we're asleep, we don't know what we're doing, and it's probably likely that we're not breathing in an ideal way. And if a little bit of tape could fix that, it might be worth a shot. This article wants to tell us why mouth taping can be dangerous. I'm sure in some instances it can, right? So it can make sleep apnea worse. One of the most dangerous trends we've seen is people using mouth tape for sleep apnea because not only is it ineffective, it's dangerous. Obstructive sleep apnea is a medical condition that causes airway blockages during sleep and taping your mouth shut may worsen this condition leading to oxygen deprivation, heart strain, and poor cognitive function. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Although I think anybody that's dealing with obstructive sleep apnea is probably not thinking that the fix is taping the mouth. One of the things that will help sleep apnea, we can say this with confidence, is getting healthier. Almost always sleep apnea is associated with unhealthy levels of excess body fat. Usually bigger people suffer. And if you want to reverse sleep apnea, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot that you can do in waking to retrain your breathing patterns, but about the best thing you can do is lose that extra 20 to 30 pounds that you might be carrying. And we have some tips on how to do that. It's called the Animal Based Lifestyle. Check it out on the channel. Pow. Some people tape Go their mouths shut like this. This way? It's the latest viral health trend. Don't. You're getting deeper sleep. With nearly 40 million views on TikTok, even Gwyneth Paltrow touting its benefits, calling it the single best wellness tool she'd found recently. When did Gwyneth Paltrow become a health influencer? She's on all this stuff now. When, 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 where did she come from? Anyway, go on, Gwyneth. You're literally going to tape your mouth shut. The claim that putting tape on your mouth at night can help you get better sleep. But it helps me stay asleep. A practice that mom of three, Chance Culp, says has worked wonders. I just... Press my lips together. Mm-hmm. That's it? That's it. How did you hear about mouth taping? I just saw a TikTok that said taping your mouth shut when you sleep helps you stay asleep all night. I I'll try anything once. And I tried it that night. I taped my mouth shut with just a little piece of medical tape. Just, you know? And I slept like a baby. I stayed asleep all night long. And I've done it every night since. I've not skipped a night. A feeling doctors say does have a scientific explanation. Health experts at the Cleveland Clinic say breathing through your nose may have a lot of positive health effects, like lower blood pressure, filtering out things that might cause allergies, and even decreased anxiety. Meanwhile, mouth breathing has a lot of negative side effects, including sleep disorders, bad breath, and even gum disease and misalignment of the upper and lower teeth.
we need to have more studies to really understand if it's effective. So we don't recommend it overall. Well, the science has spoken. We need more studies first to decide whether it's effective. Maybe, or maybe you could just try it if you're interested and be your own little scientist. You'll know. You'll know if you sleep better, you will know. It's very clear, I think, if you're remotely in tune with your body to know if you sleep well or you didn't. And maybe even you, kind of characters that are watching this video that are very interested in this health thing, you're doing the quantified self thing. You've got a aura uh, ring, you've got a wolf band, you're doing sleep trackers. You'll actually be able to even get data. You'll be able to see where your sleep tracking and data is at. So that could be cool. Try it, or you can, you know, sit around and wait for the science uh, to tell you whether this is good or bad. All right, this is interesting. We do have some studies, and this one here said that we investigated the effects of mouth taping during sleep in mouth breathers with mild obstructive sleep apnea. Mouth taping significantly reduced both the apnea and hypopnea. It reduced the apnea index and snoring index by approximately 47%. That's a lot, right? That's, that's pretty good. They were saying don't do it if you have an obstructive sleep apnea. So, of course, this was done by scientists in a lab. So, they were covering all of their bases and they were being very safe. But a 47% improvement in sleep apnea conditions and snoring is huge. I'm going to recommend this to my dad and save my mom from killing him. This study demonstrates that mouth taping can be effective, simple intervention for people with mild obstructive sleep apnea who are mouth breathers showing statistically significant improvements in sleep apnea severity and snoring frequency. The intervention appears to be particularly beneficial when sleeping in the supine position. Supine position is backline, right? How I always remember that is supinated means like holding a bowl of soup and pronated. I was like, I don't know what you say for that, but if you remember supinated is up and pronated is down, pronated is not good, pronated is dead. Don't sleep on your belly. All right, and another study here, we got uh, the Science Direct study examined the effects of mouth taping also in adults with mild obstructive sleep apnea. And they also found very similar thing. AHI, which is apnea hypopnea index and snoring index were reduced by 50% when participants used mouth tape during sleep. Same kind of thing. So it seems to be effective for at least, what, one out of two people. So if you're somebody that's having sleep issues and we've got hundreds of people watching this and ideally this research is suggesting that at least 50% of you are going to find some benefits from trying mouth taping. Like it's pretty cheap. You don't have to use one of these companies that actually produces these products, although there are many. You can just Google, you know, sleep tape and you'll see specifically designed tape and it will have a little snip in the middle so you can have a little bit of flex in the mouth that feels maybe less constrictive or suffocating. But what I was using was just classic CVS microspore tape. You can use anything really. You can use athletic tape and just shut your mouth and see what it's like to sleep. So there you have it, friends. This is another one of those seemingly weird things on the outset that's actually underpinned by a lot of stuff that just makes sense when we understand breathing mechanics and facial structure. And like I said at the beginning, if you can optimize sleep in whichever way that means, and sleep is not just this thing you do that's not sexy where you're just kind of offline and it's whatever, that sleep is actually a healing restorative phase that you want to make as dialed in as you possibly can, then a little bit of mouth tape might go a long way. And of course, the only way to find is to try it for yourself and see how you feel and report back. Or if you're a current mouth taper, not a mouth breather, because we're throwing a lot of shade at those today, let us know in the comments. And if you're a mouth breather, maybe we can fix you. Maybe mouth tape can fix you. Animal-based diet and some natural living, some good sunshine, some low-stress lifestyles. And as always, we're not doctors, medical professionals, but we like to see what's going on in the world and uh, add some commentary. So we'll see you out there. Let us know. Peace.